Welcome to Fenway Park on a beautiful night for baseball. It's game two of a three-game series between the Minnesota Twins and the Boston Red Sox. Welcome inside the booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Jerry Remy. Welcome to Red Sox baseball. Well, last night, the Red Sox secured a one to nothing victory largely because of their good pitching last night. And, Jerry, they pitched very well lately. Well, overall, the starting pitching has been outstanding for the Boston Red Sox. And it goes back to a start that John Lester made against the Cleveland Indians. So look at the numbers for the last time through the rotation. A 3-0 and record at a 1.89 ERA only allowing 5.6 hits per game and only allowing two home runs. Now, that's quality starting pitching. There's no question about that. We look at Lester's last outing, plus John pitching in the ball game tonight. We take a look at three strikeouts. He had the good curveball working for him last time, that fastball on the inside part of the plate to the lefty, and a fastball to the outside part of the plate to the right-handed hitter. He was on target here at Fenway Park, hoping to do the same thing here tonight to the Minnesota Twins. Here we matched up against Phil Hughes. Red Sox trying to make it two in a row as the Red Sox continue this homestand from Fenway Park. A lot of kids here tonight. His school is just about out around New England. Hope you'll join us. We're back with more right after this. West Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Well, it's a beautiful summer night in the back bay of Boston as we welcome you inside Fenway Park. Getting ready for game two of a three-game series between the Red Sox and the Twins. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo. Well, the Red Sox took a flyer in February on outfielder Grady Sizemore, and things worked well for the Red Sox out of the gate. Grady was very good during spring training and, in fact, had a home run on opening day at Camden Yards in Baltimore for Boston. After two years off, it seemed like things were going well, but lately they have not for Grady Sizemore. Today, the Red Sox made the decision to designate him for assignment. It would be interesting to see if another team will We'll take a flyer on Sizemore now. Hitting at 216 this year with the Red Sox to this point. The Red Sox today is part of the move, bringing up Garen Shakini from Pawtucket, who is hitting at 263, his second stint of the season in Boston. With more, here's Gary Streisky. Yeah, Don, I tell you what, after Garen Shakini's baseball career is over with, he might be one heck of a motivational speaker. Called up again today and had nothing but good things to say, despite the fact he doesn't really know when or if he'll even play during this call-up. He already got the first hit as a Red Sox player out of the way the last time he got called up. So this time around, it's just all about plugging holes and fitting in wherever John Farrell might need him to, as he explains in our Geico quote of the day. Putting things in perspective that you're playing for the defending world champions. That's how I take it. I'm, I'm in, I was in AAA for the defending world champion. Now I'm in Boston wanting to help the Red Sox win, uh, trying to keep things in perspective and s living the dream. Well, the Red Sox trying to make it two in a row against the Minnesota Twins. We're back at the first pitch from Fenway right after this.
your Subaru dealers of New England. Dunkin' Donuts. And by Toyota's website for deals, by Toyota.com. Welcome back to Fenway Park on a warm evening from Fenway as the Red Sox and Minnesota Twins get ready for game two of the series. Red Sox able to beat the Twins here last night one to nothing. And tonight John Lester trying to get up over 500 individually as he comes in at seven and seven. Well, fans, you can test your Red Sox IQ right now with the MLB Preplay mobile app. Download for free and start predicting every at bat of every Red Sox game all season. Tonight, Preplay predicts John Lester will go seven and a third innings, allowing five hits, giving up two earned runs while striking out seven. And we talked about the pitching a lot tonight, Jerry, as far as our uh, pregame uh, stuff went and uh, view from the booth and the open and everything else. But, you know, the end of the game relief and the middle of the game relief has been especially good lately also. Yeah, it really has. Guys like Baden Hop and uh, uh, Tazawa and uh, Yui Hara, of course, uh, all pitching very, very well. Miller, Breslow, the, the whole bullpen really doing a terrific job uh, recently for the Boston Red Sox. And they've had to do that because the Red Sox have not been scoring runs. So, I mean, you get late in that ball game, and uh, you got a very tight one, it seems like, almost every night, night after night. And a lot has been put on that bullpen along with the starting pitches, and they've responded uh, very nicely to it. Red Sox have had a couple of one nothing victories. They had one in Baltimore and, of course, one here last night. The only run last night was a sack fly off the bat of uh, A.J. Pierzynski. The difference in the game last night. Pierzynski gets a night off tonight as David Ross will be doing the catching for the Red Sox. Well, that is unusual, too, to have uh, the Red Sox, you know, only be able to score one run in a ball game. But that's the way it's been going for them. And they keep waiting for that day that it's going to turn around and they put a bunch of points up on the board and make an, make an easy game for themselves. Now John Lester matched up against Phil Hughes tonight in game two of the series as the Red Sox take the field tonight at Fenway. As they do, let's check out the Minnesota Twins starting lineup. Danny Santana leading it off for the Twins. He's at shortstop with Brian Dozier at second base. Joe Maurer at first base, bats third with Josh Willingham in left field. Kendrys Morales is the DH in tonight's game, batting fifth. Does Waldo Arcia in right field. Kurt Suzuki, the veteran catcher, bats seventh. Eduardo Escobar at third base, bats eighth. And Sam Fold bats ninth. Same lineup as the Twins featured in last night's game. Tonight's Red Sox starting pitcher presented by your New England Audi dealers. Experience the all-new 2015 Audi A3 today. John Lester on the mound for his 15th start of the year, 7-7, seven and seven, with a 3.33 earned run average, 92 innings, 99 strikeouts, 24 walks along the way, and he has an opponent batting average of 263. Thursday against the Indians, a victory and a very good outing. Seven and two-thirds innings here at Fenway Park. Gave up uh, just the two runs. One was earned. Ended up striking out four in that victory against the Indians. And the Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They are eighth in the American League with 40 errors in 70 games. Xander Bogots will be at third base. Steven Drew, the shortstop. Dustin Pedroia at second. Mike Napoli, the first baseman. Left to right, Johnny Gomes. Brock Holt in center field tonight. Daniel Navar in right field, and David Ross doing the catching for John Lester. Uh, Pirate crew tonight, Clint Fagan has a play calling the balls and strikes with Mark Carlson at first base. The crew chief, Tim Welke, is at second base, and Todd Titchener, who had the plate last night, is at third base tonight. This game is available in Spanish. The SAP function is brought to you by the new Captain Morgan White Rum. Buenas noches, amigos. Well, the crowd settling into a warm Fenway Park with a nice breeze tonight, 79 degrees to start the game. The breeze out to center at 15 miles per hour, and the forecast partly cloudy for the remainder of the evening. Lights are on here at Fenway Park. And Danny Santana about to step in here for the Twins. The Sox have now won three of their last five games. Start the game. Eight and a half games back of the Toronto Blue Jays and in fourth place in the American League East. Lester ready with the first pitch of the ball game. And it's in there for strike one and we're underway. Only Santana hitting at 340. Two homers and 15 runs batted in. 
Lead off hitter for the Twins now. Their everyday shortstop. Lester has not faced the Minnesota Twins since back in 2012 in his career. One and four against Minnesota with a 4.74 ERA. Jumps ahead of Santana, one and two. 93 that time on the fastball for Lester. The Red Sox of the win last night, still a game under 500 at home at Fenway Park. They come in at 18 and 19 here at Fenway. And overall 32 and 38 on the season. Popped up foul and out of play. Now record wise, it's been a different year from Lester at 500 individually at seven and seven. The ERA has been pretty good at 3.33. Another foul back on a cutter that time. Still one and two. And Santana, a switch hitter, and uh, hits better from the right side of the plate than he does the left side. Right handed 400, left handed 325. Called up on May the 5th. And it's put together some very good numbers, especially average wise at 340. Top of the order for the Twins. One, two pitches outside, two and two. It foul off himself and down goes Santana. And that's what a run of right hand hitters will do on that cut fastball, especially if it's down around the ankles. They'll hit on top of it and a lot of times hit it off their foot or some part of the leg. That time right off, it looked like around the ankle area for Santana. Eight swing, defensive swing. Fouled off into the grandstand area off to the right. Good battle here and right out of the gate for John Lester having to deal with Danny Santana, who has a lot of pitches, fouled off some, taking some. Pitch nine of the at bat, and it'll miss for ball three, full count. Ball inside. And it's fouled off again. Off to the right, out of play. Now Santana doing a very good job here against John Lester in that leadoff spot, making him throw a lot of pitches, 10 pitches so far in this at bat. Santana with a line drive base hit into left center field. Brock Cole plays it on a hop, but a good at bat for Danny Santana who gets himself a hit. And the 11th pitch of that at bat, he wins the battle. Yeah, John Lester tried to put him away with a cut fastball down and in, and instead Santana puts it on a line in the center field for the base hit. He can run. Five steals on the season. Remember, called up a late. Has not been caught. Five for five. Lead runner on here for the Twins. Here is Brian Dozier. 239, 15 homers and 35 runs batted in for Dozier. Second baseman with some pop for the Twins. As he takes strike one. Buster starting off ahead. Those are 0 for his last seven at the plate and 0 for three in the first game of the series here last night. Sean Bunt drops it down foul. Now 0 and 2. 
Now, it's stunned yesterday when I was looking at the averages for Dozier. I mean, the average is not that high. 239 coming into the game, but the power numbers, the RBIs are there and the stolen bases. 15 home runs, 35 RBIs, 15 steals. Number of runs, uh, it's amazing. Twins have 295 runs. He scored 55 of the 295. Runner goes, pitch foul back. Yeah, Santana will have to go back to the bag at first. Fly ball foul off to the right out of play. I see the All Star patcher in the Twins uniform. All Star game at Target Field this year in Minnesota. What a beautiful vacation spot that is uh, for a All Star game. Beautiful ballpark, nice city. And in one and two. Two batters so far, 15, now 16 pitches for John Lester. Not recorded an out, and it's been a battle here between Santana and now Dozier. One, two is to right. Nava is there, and he makes the catch. Bill of the cap high for the first out here in the first inning. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out of market game live and in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit RedSox.com for details. One out, one on. Joe Maurer, the batter. Unusually low batting average for a guy who spent the majority of his career up over 300. He hits at 258 coming in. Two homers and 15 runs batted in for Maurer. It's not good numbers though against John Lester. 350 in his career against Lester. It was 0 for 3 in the game last night. And take strike one. Red Sox playing him to pull in the infield, shading him to the opposite field in the outfield. I marks the 111th career game for Maurer at first base. There are the numbers against Lester. He's actually hitting better on the road than he is at home. Hitting at 262 on the road, 254 at home. Lester holding the ball a long time. Runner starts and stops, and Maurer takes what is called a ball. And just by holding the ball a long time that time, I think Lester fooled the Santana at first base. Looks like he wanted to go on that, but the length of time, I think, threw his timing off. Side again, Ross tried to bring it to the corner. Three and one. Mauer now, Willingham next as the Twins bat here in the top of the first inning. They're making Lester work here out of the gate. Runner goes 3 1 is in the air to left field playable for Johnny Gomes out there and left. He'll make the catch as Santana makes his way back to the bag at first two down. Now Santana had a very good jump over at first base but Mawa making contact and the fly ball right at Johnny Gomes. That was a cut fastball from Lester so two outs and 
Santana still at first base. Well, two down here is Josh Willingham. As we take a look at uh, the key matchup, Josh Willingham just two for 11 in his career against Leicester with seven strikeouts coming into tonight. This key matchup has been brought to you by People's United Bank, where John Lester does his banking. Two outs, runner at first. Willingham fouls it back for strike one. Old for four in the game here last night. 35 year old left fielder for the Twins. Runner goes. Pitches inside. Throw from Ross is not going to be in time. And a stolen base for Danny Santana to get into scoring position with two down. That's about three or four times he's tried to get to second base, and finally he does get there. Not that great a jump. But he picked up a lot of speed with his natural speed heading into second base. The throw one hop to the shortstop side and Santana in scoring position. So two down, Santana at second base now. Willingham, an off balance swing there, got fooled one and two. At curveball that time from Lester, he's thrown a couple here in the first inning and. This one off speed enough to fool Willingham. Five hundred with runners in scoring position for Willingham during the season. Trying to pick up that outside corner, but too far out there. Two and two. All five of Willingham's home runs have come in his last 17 games for Rodden Garden Hire. Little bloop foul ground and it'll fall harmlessly over by the Red Sox dugout. Foul and the inning continues. Long first inning for Lester. He gave up a base hit to Danny Santana. An 11 pitch at bat. Santana steals second. Dozier lining out to right. Maurer flies out to left. This will be the 29th pitch of this first inning for John Lester. Like strike three, but Lester didn't get the call. Full count. Yeah, he wanted that real bad. He was making his way toward the Red Sox dugout. Looked like a pretty good pitch. A fastball down at the bottom of the strike zone, as you can see right there. And that should have been strike three. Lester taking a long walk behind the mound right now, trying to gather himself back together. This will be the 30th pitch of the first inning for John Lester. And it's fouled off to the right. We'll do it again. Billingham, member of the Marlins, the Nationals, the Oakland A's. Now the Minnesota Twins since 2012. Oh. Thought about it. Did he go? No, says Mark Carlson. And down to first base goes Willingham with a walk. 
Well, the first walk given up by Lester in the inning continues. John Farrell coming out here as David Ross may have injured himself on that ball in the dirt. Right Pearson is out there. Yeah, I think the ball was a curveball. I think it bounced up and got him in the throat. Ooh. Yeah. It should bounce right back up underneath that mask, and looks like Ross is going to be okay, but uh, not a fun place to get hit. And John Farrell also making a visit to the mound here to talk to Lester. Well, tonight's league leaders are brought to you by Lakenta. American League walks and the Oakland A's at 296. Then the Red Sox and the Twins, even down 263, updated with the walk for Josh Willingham. So two on here, two down. And Kendry's Morales, the batter for the Twins, in a long first inning here for John Lester. Twins have not been able to play to run yet, but boy, they have gone deep into counts. And here is pitch 32 of this first inning. It's ball one. Morales available to all 30 teams, and for a while, before the Twins finally came calling to Kendris Morales. Spent last year with the Seattle Mariners. Pops it up. Around the bag, it's second. Pedroia behind the bag will put it away to end the first inning. A long first inning at that, and a long look from Lester to Clint Fagan in behind the plate. Red Sox coming up. Score, but the Red Sox are coming up here in the bottom of the first inning. And the Red Sox starting lineup. Brock Holt is in center field, leading it off as Xander Bogarts at third base, batting second. Dustin Pedroia at second base. David Ortiz at DH with Mike Napoli at first. Daniel Nava in right field with Johnny Gomes in left. Stephen Drew bats eighth at shortstop, and David Ross does the catching as he bats ninth. Starting lineup brought to you by your Toyota dealers of New England. 
Tonight's twin starting pitcher presented by your New England Nissan dealers and Phil Hughes 14th start of the year 7 and 2 with a 3.17 earned run average. As Brock Holt leads it off and takes ball one. Like Jerry I guess it was just a matter of time before uh, Brock Holt moved into center field and I guess uh, next he'll be catching I would imagine. <laughs> be, well yeah we yet. started to hear about center field what about five days ago. Yeah. And it's finally taking place here tonight. And uh, this kid has played all over the place. First base, third base, left field, right field, center field. And you're right. If they needed a backup catcher or a third catcher, he'd probably be it. He continues to hit as well, hitting at 333. And speaking of hits, there's a base hit to left field. Willingham does a good job of cutting it off and getting it back in. But Holt's got a leadoff single here in the bottom of the first inning. First time that he has faced Phil Hughes. Gets a fastball down in the zone and takes it. That inside out swing to the opposite field. The hard line drive. Picks up the base hit to lead off the uh, Red Sox half of the first inning. So lead runner on here for the Red Sox. And it brings up Xander Bogarts. 277. Six homers, 18 runs batted in for Xander. Look out, pitch down and in. Good pick by Kurt Suzuki. Second stop that uses that against the Red Sox this year. Did not get a decision, but went six innings, giving up one earned run. Struck out eight, didn't walk anybody. Ground ball to deep third, picked by Escobar. Long throw is going to get there in time. Nice play by Escobar. To retire Bogarts as Holt takes second base. Yeah, that's showing off a third baseman's arm, isn't it? Right there. Eduardo Escobar at third base, backhanding the ball, and from foul territory, throwing a seed across the diamond to get the out. Very impressive right there with that throwing arm. That is a plus arm. One out, Holt at second base. Here's Dustin Pedroia. 264, three homers and 24 runs batted in. Late on the fastball, 0 and 1. Let's take a look at our Chevy key player to watch, Dustin Pedroia, reach base safely in 29 straight games against the Twins, most in Boston history coming into tonight. Pedroia lines it out to left center field. A base hit. Brock Holt being waved around. He will score. Throw goes to second, and Pedroia will be safe at second base. Eluded the tag. Had to wait. Tim Wilkie wanted to make sure that he got there, and he did. Red Sox take a 1 0 lead. Well, he took a strange route to get there, but he got there. He jumps all over a high fastball, Pedroia does, and puts it on a line, and he's thinking two bases right on contact. Holt's going to have no problem scoring, as you can see right there. And then Pedroia does his magic at second base with the slide. Sees the ball going to be on the outside, comes back inside, and finally gets the bag with his left hand. As a base runner, you have that play in front of you. You can see it develop. You can see where the throw goes, and you adjust the slide accordingly. One out. Pedroia at second base. Picks up his 25th RBI of the year. Here's David Ortiz. Big Poppy takes strike one. Up foul back and out of play. 0 and 2. Well, help Nessa by taking a quick two minute survey and enter for a chance to win a VIP Nessen experience at the ballpark in July. Visit Nessen.com slash survey during tonight's game for your chance to win.
Eight swing, defensive swing, fouled off into the seats. Pretty good curveball that time from Hughes, too. It's one that Ortiz really kind of had to swing at because it was close enough to be called a strike. Ortiz goes down with it and fouls it off. 446 career home runs for Big Poppy. Three shy of moving into a three way tie for 36th place all time. Thought about it, but it's outside. Didn't go, says Todd Titchener, third base umpire. Good numbers against this old team this year in four games at 471. Jammed and fouls it back. I think that's one David would like to have back right there. A fastball right down the middle, just a little bit above the belt. And fouling it straight back. But uh, that's a pitch that uh, Ortiz can drive and drive a long way. Two and two. Good numbers against Phil Hughes at 360 is two home runs against Hughes. So Red Sox saw plenty of Phil Hughes, whether he's in the Yankees rotation or out of the Yankees pen. Chopped into the shift right side. Dozier in short right. Long throw, but he gets it there in plenty of time. As Pedroia takes third base. Let's look at the Twins defense. They're fifth in the American League with 36 errors in 68 games. Escobar, Santana, Doja, and Maurer in the infield. Willingham, Fold, and Arcea in the outfield. And Kurt Suzuki doing the catching for Hughes. So two down. Pedroia 90 feet away. A run already in for Boston. And here's Mike Napoli. 267, six homers and 26 runs batted in for Napoli. 0 for 4 in the ball game here last night. Tonight's key matchup brought to you by Honda. Start something special with a great deal on a Honda. 417 his career against Hughes. Napoli fouling it straight back to fastball right down the middle. 0 and 2. And got a couple of guys in this lineup with pretty gaudy numbers against Hughes. Pedroia being one of them. Ortiz, Napoli. Misses with a breaking ball in the dirt. One and two. The impressive thing about Hughes, the number of walks allowed only eight walks in 13 starts so far in the season for him. You know, Hughes in the majors. You know, it's an unusual number, Don. Right hand is hitting 331 against Hughes. Mm -hmm. Lefty's 179. Chop to third. Escobar has got it. His throw across and plenty of time to get Napoli to end the inning. Red Sox lead Pedroia at third, but get a run and lead it one to nothing.
Jerry, that is a nice sign. Very nice sign. A lot of, uh, yes. a lot of ingredients on there that are uh, <laughs> absolutely necessary on a sign. <laughs> There's some key elements to that sign. Well thought out. Swing and a miss as Waldo Arcia. If you're thinking about bringing a sign to Fenway Park, a couple things you may want to consider. <laughs> that would be a good example of that sign there. That would be Exhibit A, of, probably. Of one you'd want to bring. Yeah. That's it, right there. That's perfect. I don't remember taking a picture like that. Do you? Yes, I do. You do? Yes, I do. I remember I have that picture in my dressing room of you and I. You have it or had it? I have it. Oh, you have it currently. Swing and a miss. Oswaldo Arcia strikes out first K for Lester. Now Lester going to the cut fastball to pick up his first strike out of the night. He had four last time out against Cleveland. His high in the season is 15. That was against the Oakland Athletics. One down here in the second inning. Kurt Suzuki. 304, two homers and 30 runs batted in. Suzuki started last night's game and generally will in there for strike one a guy who likes to play every day and does over the course of his career in fact since 2008 he has played in the fourth most games behind the plate in the majors trailing only Yadier Molina of the Cardinals AJ Pazinski of the Red Sox and Brian McCann of the Yankees foul ball in behind the Red Sox dugout. One, two, the count to Suzuki. Probably the most humid night we've had here at Fenway Park this season. Warm, humid tonight. Supposed to be a scorcher tomorrow, I guess. For the final game, day game with this homestand. And the Red Sox off to the West Coast. First West Coast trip of the year. Red Sox going to Oakland, Seattle, and then back to New York. On this next road trip. Part of a June that sees the Red Sox play a lot of games away from Fenway. Grounder foul. Look at the schedule upcoming for the Red Sox. Day, day baseball here tomorrow. And then it is off to Oakland for four games. Seattle, New York for coming back to play a three game series against the Cubs and the Baltimore Orioles. As we roll right into July. One two pitch. Outside two and two. Eduardo Escobar waiting on deck here for the twins in the second inning. Lester had a 33 pitch first inning. Oh, fly ball foul off to the right out of play. He could use an economical inning here in the second to try to get back on track as far as pitch count goes in this game. Tough when you throw 33 right out of the gate. Swing and a miss, and Kurt Suzuki strikes out back to back K's now for Lester, two down. Well, Jerry, tonight's view is one that you see often. It is the fifth floor here at Fenway Park where they have uh, the voices of Fenway Park, kind of a wall here right in front of uh, where you come into our broadcast center of all the announcers that have worked on this level here at Fenway. Joe Castiglione, of course, Sherm Feller, longtime PA announcer. The voices of Fenway Park, and they're kind enough to have a photo of you and I outside. So, yeah, nice, nice touch up here on the fifth level. I think they did that, uh, what, two years ago? Yep. By the way, that strikeout of Suzuki, very tough to do. That's only the 18th time he has struck out this season. Send in your videos. We'll get them on the air for you. 536, 536. Keyword Jerry. And back to back K's for Lester, two down here in the second. Eduardo Escobar. In there for a strike. 
Curveball that time from Lester, and he jumps ahead one and two. Strike three call. Lester gets Arcia, Suzuki, and Escobar all by way of the K. A tough time and it was a battle of the signs tonight. I don't know which one's better. I think they're all terrific. Uh, they're very good. Very good signs tonight here at Fenway as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Red Sox have a one nothing lead. Nava, Gomes, and Drew. Nava getting the start in right field tonight. 204, two homers, and four runs batted in. And Red Sox. Announcing today the designation for assignment of Grady Sizemore, which kind of a surprise today, just because I guess the timing of it all, things were kind of moving along, and Sizemore really was getting less and less playing time and kind of struggling at the plate after what was a very fast start for him to begin the season. Yeah, and as John Farrell said in his meeting with the media today, there's going to be a lot of moving parts over the next couple of days. Victorino's expected to come back, so there's going to be you know a few changes to the roster, and today Grady Sizemore let go by the Red Sox and. You know, as I said in our first few from the booth that they didn't use, is the, that I give the guy an awful lot of credit. I really do because, you know, from playing this game to be out of it for two years and to make the effort that he made to come back, I thought was, uh, you know, a fantastic effort that he did make. I mean, he looked great in spring training. He won a job. He had a great series in Baltimore. But to maintain that at this level is very difficult with the injuries he's had and also you know to come back to this level to play and very very difficult so I but I give him a lot of credit I really do it'll be interesting to see if the Red Sox as Nava strikes out here for the first out of the second inning if the Red Sox can make a deal with somebody to get that 72 hour window to perhaps do that if there is yeah. another team issue maybe you can find a place where you can play on a more regular yeah, basis I, you know for his sake I hope so I you know I really do because he's worked very hard to try to get back to this level and, and be competitive Well, Nava frustrated with the strike three call, as was John Farrell. Johnny Gomes, the batter. And he'll take strike one. Gomes getting the start in the left field, and hitting at 241. Five homers, 25 runs batted in.
Holmes fights it off foul 93 on the fastball from Hughes and it's one and two. Yeah, we usually do a uh, view from the booth. Those are, you know, watch our pregame show, yes, which is every many night. every night. And mm -hmm. tonight we did a view from the booth, and we were instructed that that's not the view that they really wanted. So right. we had to do another one. So we did really two of them tonight. Right. One we kept, and one we did not keep. I think the one that they wanted was Stephen Drew. Stephen Drew, we did right. it. We did the Stephen Drew view yeah. from the booth tonight. So the one that you spent a lot of time on, did a really good job on, never saw air. But I just. Put, pretty cut. much went through. Yeah, it, just, it ends up on the floor like a lot yes. of like a lot of your movie stuff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> strike three. It's Johnny Gomes strikes out and it's back to back case for Phil Hughes. Phil Hughes going to the curveball that time to pick up the strikeout. So a strikeout with Navar on a fastball. He gets Gomes on the breaking ball. And again, Hughes all over that home plate just doesn't walk many people at all. As Don mentioned, eight all season long. This whole staff, this whole Minnesota staff does not walk people. Two down, four in a row. Retired by Phil Hughes and Stephen Drew, who you did talk about at length. Goes the other way. Down the left field line towards the corner. Willingham is back. It's going to be off the wall. Plays the carom and no throw to second. Standing at second with a two-out double is Stephen Drew. And as we mentioned in view from the booth, Stephen Drew started to swing the bat very well last night. Had a couple of hits, and he continues tonight. Again, gets a fastball away and takes advantage of that left field wall out there and finds himself in scoring position with two outs. So after two strikeouts, Drew finds the left field wall. So they knew back at the home studio what they were talking about more than, than I did. There's no question about that. Drew just doubled. Now he stands at second base with two down. David Ross coming up. 169 for Ross with two homers and five runs batted in. Ross did not play yesterday. Last six starts that Ross has had behind the plate. Red Sox as a team have gone four and two in those six starts. And good numbers against Phil Hughes, so he's in there tonight. Good numbers against Hughes, and generally when he catches, John Lester. So kind of a twofold reason tonight. Late swing, and he's down 0-2, 94 on the fastball. And yeah, keeping the fastball away from David Ross that time. David likes the fastball middle end. Jay Przinsky on the bench to begin the ball game tonight. Getting the bulk of the playing time. Brock Holt, top of the order, waiting on deck. Holt with a single in the first inning. Tap foul. They got a piece of Suzuki. As we all know, a happy staff equals a productive staff. There is no better way to show your employees a good time than treating them to a night at Fenway Park. Go to RedSox.com slash groups to book your company outing now. With second base with two down in the inning. One two to David Ross. Foul and out of play. The division leading Blue Jays tonight are in New York and they're in the third inning with Toronto on top one to nothing. Four and a half games between the Yankees and the Blue Jays. So they begin that series in American League East. Ross strikes out the high fastball and Hughes strikes out the side through two at Fenway one nothing Boston.
Minnesota Twins. We head into the top half of the third inning at Fenway. And a great partnership Nesson has had over the years with WJR Channel 10 in Providence. It's always great to see Frank Carpano. Frank, great to see you. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming up again. Thank you very much, Jerry. Frank, how are you? Good. It's nice amazing to see you. the uh, connection really with uh, Boston and the Providence area. Of course, in Pawtucket, we have seen so many Paw Sox players come up this year. It's been incredible. And I tell you what, in Pawtucket, we've seen a lot of Boston players, <laughs> unfortunately. It's gone the uh, other way as well. Yeah, and Clay Buckholz will be pitching Thursday for the Paw Sox in Rochester. And, of course, uh, Felix Dubrant has been there and Will Middlebrooks and uh, Shane Victorino, who are uh, on rehab assignments there now. So it's a real treat for everybody at McCoy Stadium to see those guys. Garen Shakini called up today, a guy who's been with the Paw Sox this year. And, you know, the success of Ruby De La Rosa and also this season we have seen Brandon Workman. I mean, it's been amazing. And, of course, Brock Holt. Yes. Uh, yep. The legend of Brock Holt as it continues. <laughs> It is great to see, and that, that's one of the great selling points of McCoy Stadium, as you well know, that you're going to see the stars of tomorrow today. And, uh, you know, they say that thinking long term, but in many cases it is tomorrow that you see them uh, in Boston. When the rehab players go down there, do they, uh, they extra crowd? Is the crowd a little bit bigger? Or they... Absolutely, Jerry. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, we've had David Ortiz down there many years ago. Roger Clemens was there. Yeah. And you always get an extra, uh, extra people and a real buzz going yeah. when that happens. I remember Mo Vaughn coming down there when I was there, Dennis Eckersley and some others. It really is fun for them to see those guys come down. Well, one of the most famous games that they had was when Mark Fidrich and Dave Rigetti uh, oh, wow. pitched against yeah. each other. Uh, that was huge. This is on the ground foul outside of first base. And, of course, still to this date, the longest game in baseball history still belongs to Pawtucket and Rochester. 33 inning game. I remember, and I've been at uh, Channel 10 for a few years, that uh, the first part of that game, it was uh, a Saturday night leading into a Sunday Easter, and I kept calling the press box wondering what the score was. And uh, they, no, we're still going. We're still going. <laughs> 11 o'clock, 11.20, we go on. No, we're still playing, and well into the morning. Two, two pitch, get a miss from Lester. Close pitch, he wanted it, full count. Yeah, there's been a few in this game that Lester has not got that uh, he thinks he should have gotten. They've been very, very close. There's been some chirping going on between the Red Sox dugout, the home plate umpire. Glenn Fagan has the plate tonight. And a pop-up here. Back comes Ross towards the screen and makes the catch. Right up against it. Didn't have much more room, but he's able to make the grab for the first out of the inning. We've had a lot to cover down here this year. Providence College had a great season. You know, the, there was a buzz at the Dunkin' Donuts Center at one of the PC games. We heard that Jerry Remy was in the crowd. You I took was. one of the games, didn't you? I did. I, yes, I had great seats, too, right behind where the announcers sit. And uh, my brother-in-law is uh, the alumni director down there, so that's why I got those good seats. Yeah. So, uh, they, were, they were fun to watch. They are a lot of fun to watch. They won the Big East uh, tournament, yep. which was certainly great for Ed Cooley's kids. And uh, they've got some great recruits coming in, so we're looking forward to another great winter with the Friars. Frank does a great job doing the PA for all the Friars games at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. So all the Providence College Friar fans certainly know that and has for a great number of years. So it's great to have him with us. And, the partnership last year, we uh, had the chance to travel around a little bit too in the postseason last year. You guys were out there as well, World Series in St. Louis. Always a lot of fun uh, to, to follow the Red Sox in the postseason and uh, have done it for many years, uh, disappointingly back in 1986 and then with better <laughs> results in 04 and 07 and last year. No one pitch foul back and it's 0-2. Yeah, we got to visit earlier uh, when you guys just before John Farrell's uh, press conference, and Don and I got real heavy into some very important topics. Yes, restaurants in Rhode Island in the <laughs> Providence area. Hey, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, we, we got down there on that uh, tour we were on two years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I hadn't been in Providence for oh, quite a while. It's, it's great. amazing to yeah, me. It is. I mean, it's amazing, the transformation. Shortstop Stephen Drew on the run and falling out of the box with Santana. Never really did get out. And he is out number two is not sure if he fell or not, but looked down and he was not yet out of the box. Top the fastball and uh, right there just I don't know if he tripped over his bat or just slipped. But down he goes and that makes it a very easy play for Drew. If they could all be that easy. Two down here in the third inning brings up Brian Dozier. Now Frank you're so big down there you must have your own like uh table every every restaurant you go to, right <laughs> so big because i go to a lot of those restaurants that's why <laughs> when i first started many years ago at channel 10 i was a lot lighter you know <laughs> but so many great restaurants there you got to sample them all you know, channel 10 is so terrific and do such a great job not only sports but news and 
uh, the group you guys have had together for a long time as a broadcast team. Yeah, we have uh, quite a few people who have been there a couple of decades. Yes. And we've got some great newcomers as well. So uh, it's, it's a great mix of, uh, of the young and older. I'm going to put you on the spot. How many years is it for Frank Carpano? Uh, 34 years. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Started when I was uh, eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of fun watching uh, Mookie Betts come up yes. now. It's a few weeks yeah. now with uh, Pawtucket uh, kind of skyrocketing up the, uh, the ladder. We hear about Sox. him just about every day here. So, I mean, I can only imagine. I mean, he started the year uh, with Portland Sea Dogs and then moved up. I guess it's kind of like a Xander Bogarts type situation. It is. And, you know, he's uh, this is his first few weeks in AAA. And would you agree, Jerry, that move, making the jump from AA to AAA is probably one of the toughest ones for a ball player to make? I would say so because you've got a lot of guys that have come down from the big leagues and, you know, they, they have a little better idea pitching-wise than, you know, at the lower levels. So it's it's a major jump. But... You know, in some cases, you know, you get guys that have better control down there, and uh, they're around the plate a little bit more than in the lower leagues. So sometimes good guys can triple A and they hit very, very, very well uh, because they're surprised that these guys are around the plate as much as they are. And Garen Shakini joining the Red Sox for the second time this season. Full count here to Brian Dozier. It's a fly ball to left field. Playable for Johnny Gomes out there. It's twilight. He doesn't see it, but it'll be caught by Holt in center. Wow. My goodness. That ended up nowhere near the left fielder, Johnny Gomes. He looked up, couldn't find it. And it's Holt, the legend of Brock Holt, who makes that catch. Frank Carpano, thanks very much. Good to see you. Thanks. Nice to see you guys. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. The lead over the Minnesota Twins, that was something <laughs> to end last inning. Well, you know, I'm watching Johnny Gomes, and I'm saying he's got no idea where the baseball is, and I was not watching Brock Holt. No, I wasn't. And he was tracking it the whole time. <laughs> About that play. <laughs> I mean, you put this guy any place, and he's making plays. I was looking at Gomes. Gomes was looking at this guy. He had his arms out. Yeah. Now, well, now Holt will drive this to left field back at the wall. It's going to be off the wall. He backed up by the center fielder fold, and Brock Holt's got his second hit of the night. He's two for two. You know, people people are really becoming to love Brock Holt. I mean, they see the type of player he is. A gritty guy, a guy that loves to play, hustles all the time, can play all kind of different positions, doing the job in the leadoff spot. He's got a second hit of the night, a single and now a double. 
I mean, he's the kind of guy that, you know, when you pay your money to watch a baseball game, you're going to see a guy hustling all the time. Now it's second base to begin the bottom of the third inning. Here's Xander Bogarts grounded out third base in the first inning, 0 for 1. Holt steals or trying to steal third will. Got a great jump. Great jump at second base. Watch him get this little walking lead towards second base and a kind of a slow delivery to home. The throw is going to be off target and Holt quickly gets himself to third base with nobody out. The element of surprise on the first pitch after the double. Bogarts to right center field. Sam Fold on the run to make the catch plenty deep enough for Holt to tag and head home with his second Boston run. He scored a both tonight. Two nothing Boston. Well, nice job by uh, Bogarts to get a pitch that he could get in the air, get it deep enough to get that run home from third base. You're looking for something that you can drive in the air. And that's exactly what Bogarts did right there on the fastball. Holt scores with no problem. Bogarts picks up his 19th RBI of the season. Now grounder up over the glove of Hughes. Santana on the run and in time to get Dustin Pedroia at first base. Two down. So two way and it'll bring up David Ortiz. So Brock Holt makes the catch in center field that no one could see. <laughs> and then comes up in double, steals third, scores on a sack fly. It's 2 nothing Boston. Now Big Poppy grounded out to second base in the first inning. Foul off the front of the Red Sox dugout. Ortiz 0 for 4 so far in this series against the Twins after having such a successful series in Minnesota. And a swing and a miss. High fastball, 1 and 2. Elevated by design that time by. Uh... Phil Hughes. And they throw the fastball to Ortiz. They try to elevate it up about letter high, see if he'll chase it. Chopped right side and under the glove of the shortstop, but Dozier, the second baseman at short rights, got it. And Ortiz retired. Red Sox grab a run, take a 2 0 lead through three.
the future to people who care about your community. Eastern Bank is committed to putting you first. Learn all the ways Eastern Bank puts you first at easternbank.com. A nice sunset, isn't it? Out west. Very nice. Top half of the fourth inning. Boston on top 2 nothing. 63 pitches so far for John Lester as he starts the fourth inning. There is strike one to Joe Maurer. Outside, one and one. Lester had to throw 33 first inning pitches. Did not give up a run in that inning, but some very long at bats turned in. Faced five batters, 33 pitches. On the corner for strike two. Change up that time from Lester. Not too many of those so far in the game for him. Saves it for Joe Mauer, the left handed hitter. Willingham on deck, then Morales. It is three, four, and five in the inning. It's ball two, two, and two. One hit allowed by Lester. First batter of the game, Danny Santana, single to center field. And it's not been a hit since. He's walked one since and struck out three, struck out the side in order in the second inning, getting Garcia, Suzuki, and Escobar. In the air to the left field, sending Johnny Gomes back, having trouble with it again, perhaps. No, he's got it right in front of the wall. One out in the fourth inning as we send it down to Gary. What's going on, guys? Tonight's uh, Scion TC poll is who is the best player in Twins history? How about Sox 1 for Rod Carew, Sox 2 for Harmon Killebrew, Sox 3 for Joe Maurer, Sox 4 for Kirby Puckett. Text your answer to 536-536. Message and data rates. Those may apply. Text help if you need it. Visit Nesson.com backslash terms for all the legal stuff. Guys, I'm going Brock Holt. I know he's never played for the Twins, but that seems to be the default answer to everything these days. Well, Jerry, I know you played in the Rod Carew era, and yes. it was an incredible era. Yeah, it was. He was a second baseman at the time, and I think the thing that separates Rod Carew from Kirby Puckett is that Puckett played his whole career with the Minnesota right. Twins. Uh, Rod moved around to a couple teams. The Angels eventually ended up as a first baseman. From first comes Napoli. Look out. It's going to be Lester who makes the catch. Napoli racing across the mound trying to grab it, but Lester kind of picked it away from him. Two down. And why not? I mean, nice little easy pop-up. John Lester can catch pop-ups. And he took that away from Napoli. He just stayed there. Didn't even have to move. Oh, he did. Yeah, he moved. So two down here in the fourth inning. Nine in a row now retired by Lester who has settled in here. There's two outs in the fourth and here's Kendris Morales. You never crossed with Killebrew, right? No, I did not. No, no. that was before your no, time. No, Killebrew, uh, Killebrew, if I'm not mistaken, made the final out on a pop-up to Rico Petroselli here in 1967. Uh, which put the Red Sox into the uh, World Series. I think it was Hamid Killebrew. They say he was one of the nicest guys, one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to know. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two to Morales. Swing and a miss, and Morales strikes out four Ks for Lester. He's retired ten in a row. It's two nothing Boston.
business keeps our economy and communities strong. That's why they've been named the number one SBA lender in Massachusetts five years in a row. Eastern Bank, here, your first. A time between innings, I ran into Dan Shaughnessy in the hallway, and he told me it was Rich Rollins that popped uh, up to Rico Petroselli. Okay. And I'm also being notified on Twitter by many people it was Rich Rollins. And there for strike one to Mike Napoli. The impossible dream team of 1967. Napoli, Nava, and Gomes. Center fielder Sam Fold over to right center. Napoli getting his second look tonight against Phil Hughes. Grounded out to third base in the first inning. Now they're telling me on Twitter that I played against Killebrew. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I guess the question is, did he play in 1975? Because that was your rookie year, yes? That was my the rookie Angels? year, yeah. So the, that would answer it. To the right out of play. Well, we've been asking for your fan videos. We got a good one tonight of a fan here at the ballpark watching the Brock Holt catch. In the third Let's inning. Go, they got a better look at it than I did. Yes. <laughs> Me too. That's a good video. Get, That's a very good video. If you want to get your video on the broadcast, text keyword Jerry to 536 536 and get the link. That's slash on TV to get started. Down to third base, a fair ball. Escobar's got a good arm, and he'll get it there without a problem to tire Napoli for the first out of the fourth inning. And second time Napoli has grounded out to Escobar, and second time he's made a very strong throw across the diamond to get him at first base. I don't think he did because he had his number retired May 4th of 1975. May 4th of 75? Yeah. yeah. So if he had his number retired, not likely he was playing. No. I, I, I don't recall playing against Killebrew. The 573 career home runs, 475 of them in 14 seasons with the Twins. Ranks 11th on the all time list. Home run list. This one fouled off to the left. At 30 plus 10 times. MVP in 1969. Had 49 home runs. And 140 RBIs that year. And elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1984. The 0 2 pitch. On the ground foul, still 0 and 2. Kilbrew passed away May 17th of 2011. Bert Blyleven tells the story, the uh, analyst for the Twins, who's actually off this series, uh, that he used to be a stickler for telling guys young guys to make sure they sign the autograph where people can read it mm -hmm. you know, it's so hard these days to yep. figure out autographs from the, I mean we we could get a Red Sox ball <laughs> sign and probably couldn't tell you who Ooh, half no. the names are on it I've looked at a lot of them but he that was a thing with him and that's yeah. what the Burt was talking about when we were in Minnesota he said he had this thing of it you know just make sure you sign your name the proper way legibly so people can read it One two pitch on the ground up the middle Dozier to the backhand plants and throws for the second out of the fourth inning. 
Well, East Ticket, the official Red Sox ticket partner, has the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway. All with a 200% guarantee. Right now, East Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games. Visit East Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Two outs here in the fourth inning. Johnny Gomes coming up. He struck out looking in the second inning. 0 for 1. Some Sox culture for Johnny Gomes, lone survivor, favorite food burrito, favorite artist right here, Dropkick Murphys, Napa Valley, a place you'd like to visit. Down 0 and 2. I bet he did a few times when he was a member of the Oakland Athletics. Yeah. Apparently not. Not that far away. No. I think you have the chance in the next three days after tomorrow. So we go to Oakland. He should go up there, yeah. How far is it? I don't know. Swing and a miss, and Gomes strikes out. Four Ks now for Hughes. A 1 2 3 fourth inning and a 2 0 Red Sox lead. Back at Fenway Park, 2 0. Red Sox have the lead over the Minnesota Twins. We head to the fifth inning. Luster deals with the pitch and misses inside. Don Orsillo, Jerry Remy, Gary Streisky. Game two of a three game Ooh, series. Thank you, Don. Medication time. Between the Red Sox and the Twins from Fenway into the fifth inning. It's the bottom of the hour. Yeah, but I'm a half hour late. I thought 8:30 was your uh, time. Uh, yeah, usually 8 o'clock. I take oh. my this this round this of this section of the medication. Yeah. Oswaldo Arcia fouls it back down one and two. I don't take much more than normal people. I, I really don't. Skip in two and two. Lester frustrated with the delivery. Now I'm getting tweets saying that Harmon Killebrew played for the Kansas City Royals in 1975. This is a, I've got quite a few of them. Really? Yeah. Well, what we're reading out of the guide was that his number was retired in 75, 
Maybe they retired in Minnesota. Maybe they retired in Minnesota while he was in, in Kansas playing City. in Kansas City. Yeah. Wow. Swing and a miss, and Arcia strikes out. That is five Ks now for Lester. And he's retired 11 in a row. Outside of Wally Wave. If you're at home, maybe you just want to break into this. Who is this guy? I don't know who that guy is. Who is that guy? I noticed him when it was going on. And uh, I couldn't figure it out. I'm sure somebody will let us know. It's pitch 80. Got to be a friend of Wally's. Well dressed. That's oh, very well, very well dressed. Very well dressed. <laughs> Fedora. I couldn't tell if that was yeah. a boot or not. I don't. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't <laughs> think it was. <laughs> Suzuki carves it foul. Zero and two. You take blood pressure pressure medication, don't you? Blood pressure medication? Yeah. Uh, I have had some, yes. Cholesterol? Uh, no cholesterol. No, no. No. Really? Probably should. Well, <laughs> Probably you better have really. a check. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Glad you're worried about my uh, medical conditions. He's <laughs> 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 on the ground. Deep short, Drew from shallow left, no play. As he's able to pick it, realized you just better hold on to it. Suzuki able to reach. Breaks up a string of 11 in a row retired by Lester. That's a five game hitting streak now, too, for Suzuki. Drew uh, showing some range, but uh, from that point, there really no point in even trying to make a throw. No chance to get Suzuki. I have an answer for you. The yeah. uh, mascot that was up there with Wally, the well dressed gentleman, yeah. he is the MBTA mascot. His name is Charlie. Charlie? Yes, the MBTA mascot. And that could be uh, a boot. I didn't know the MBTA had a mascot. They do. It's Charlie. Charlie. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I guess the card that you use to get on the train is known as a Charlie card. And he's Charlie. You get Charlie tickets. Very interesting. That's, that's, that's it's Charlie. amazing. You learn something new every day yeah. at the ballpark. You yeah. really do. Yeah. I got a Charlie card right here. Really? Yeah. Charlie card. And oh, he's yeah, there on it. There he, he is. He, he's right in the middle. Yeah. This is what a Charlie card looks like. Why do you have one? I have lots of stuff you it's don't know like about. It can't be yours. Okay. Might be Mary's. I, I, right? Is it Mary? I don't know. Somebody just handed it to me. Yeah, it's Mary's. <laughs> The Charlie card. Charlie's right on. You don't look like the train type to me. What? <laughs> I ride the train all the time. Mary Willagunda of the Flying Willagundas. The Willagundas of Florida. 1-1. One, one. Escobar, I'll take a pitch low, and it's 2-1. I would take the train every day if I could guarantee that I'd get a ride back. Yeah, that's a rain delay, and extra innings, and yeah, I'm I'm here in the booth, sleeping in the booth. Two one, fouled off to the right, out of play. I love trains. Two runs, four hits, no errors for the Red Sox. No runs, two hits, no errors for the Twins. Lester just had a string of 11 in a row retired, broken up by Kurt Suzuki on an infield hit to short. Popped up foul off to the right.
Fouled off, glancing off Ross, and it hangs at two and two. Well, Lester already up to 87 pitches because he had to work so hard in the, the first inning tonight. Swing and a miss. Goes around. Strikes out six K's now for Lester. Second time Eduardo Escobar is down by way of the K. And he got him on a fastball back in the second inning. This time the cut fastball down and in to pick up the strikeout. The twins are not easy to strike out. And Lester with six of them on the night. Just past Cy Young. Red Sox career leaders in strikeouts 1342. Tim Wakefield who's in our studio tonight second place behind Roger Clemens. Pedro Martinez. On the ground to second base Pedroia. Will end the inning. We are halfway through this game tonight. It's two nothing Boston. Help Nessa by taking a quick two minute survey and enter for a chance to win a VIP Nessa experience at the ballpark in July. Visit Nessa.com slash survey during tonight's game for your chance to win. Bottom of the fifth inning, Phil Hughes back on the mound, 2 0. Red Sox have the lead and they strike one to Stephen Drew. He doubled back in the second inning, has one of the four Red Sox hits in the game. Take strike two. Bill Hughes with four strikeouts has not walked anybody and has now retired six Red Sox in a row. On the ground, right side, ranging is Mauer. Hughes will cover for the out. The Sox fans want to remind you to enter the Red Sox World Series ring raffle for your chance to win incredible Red Sox World Series ring prizes. The grand prize is a 2004, 2007, and 2013 Red Sox World Series ring. To purchase raffle tickets and learn more about the second and third place prizes, go to RedSox.com slash ring raffle. One down here in the fifth and David Ross the batter. Uh, struck out swinging in the second inning. <laughs> 
Popped up right side of the infield. Dozier, the second baseman, secures out number two. Now, well, Brock Holtz already had a very good night for the Red Sox uh, back in the third inning. This fly ball that nobody could see. Johnny Gomes had no idea it was, and look who comes out of center field to make the play. Last time up, up against the wall for a double, followed very quickly by the steal of third base. Eventually scored on the sacrifice fly by Bogarts. Third look for him at Phil Hughes tonight. Holt started the night by leading all Major League rookies with a 333 average. Takes the strike one and one. Each base safely now 24 of 26 starts as the Red Sox leadoff hitter. And from the top spot, 339 average. That is Major League leading. Breaking ball in there for strike two. Good curve ball one and two. Hold now. The inning continues. Xander Bogarts will be next. Strike three call. That's the outside corner. Fifth strikeout for Hughes. Through five from Fenway. It's two nothing Boston. Top half of the sixth inning. John Lester back on the mound again. 90 total pitches for Lester as he starts the sixth inning. Danny Santana. Top of the Twins order shows bunt. Did he go? No, says Mark Carlson. Trying to drop one down that third baseline on Xander Bogots, but uh, got the breaking ball, which I believe threw his timing off a little bit. Line down the left field line. This will get in and head towards the corner. Johnny Gomes over to plate as it rattles around down there. And a leadoff double for Danny Santana. His second hit of the night. Yeah, let off the game on a cut fastball. Got a base hit off John Lester. And now in the sixth inning gets the fastball from Lester. And uh, 
takes it hard down that left field line for a double to get in a scoring position with nobody out. The pitching line brought to you by Ace Ticket for John Lester. Five plus innings, three hits, no runs. Walk and six K's, 92 pitches deep into his outing. Lead off double here for Danny Santana to begin the sixth inning. And there's Brian Dozier. The bunt pushed hard down the first baseline. Napoli will flip to Pedroia covering and they get him. So the third base goes Santana. Bunting for a base hit there, Jerry. They're trying to get the runner over. Well, I think I think a little bit of both. I think, you know, definitely trying to get the runner to third base. It's a two-run ball game, middle of the ball game. Also try to get himself a base hit right there. What a nice job by Pedroia to get over and cover that ground and get the out of first base. It was by Lester. He couldn't get to first base. The only guy that could get there was Dustin. And he was able to beat the Dozier to the bag. So I guess they're trying to get a run any way they can, Jerry, because they've now gone the last 17 innings without a run. Wow. I didn't realize that. Sunday and the final game of the series against Detroit before coming here to Fenway Park. So 17 innings without a run. They'll take one if they can grab one here with one out in the sixth inning. There is Joe Maurer, 0 for 2 in the game. And just to finish up our Harmon Killebrew talk, your major league debut, you played against Harmon Killebrew. I was reading that. Yes, I have the box score. You went two for five. Your major league debut. I thought it was one for three. This says two for five. Maybe it was. I don't Tuesday, know. April 29th, 1975, at the Royals. I know. Uh, Did you open up no, in Kansas City? No, we That's opened. Wrong. No, we opened up at home. Aha. Uh -huh. At Anaheim. Nolan Ryan had to be the pitcher that day. But at any rate, he played 106 games that year, 1975, for Kansas, Kansas City. City. So you played him yeah. a few times. It worked out to be his last year. 1-1 one, one will miss inside, 2-1. and one. Side ball three, three and one now to Maurer. Protecting the play, fouls it off to the left, and it's a full count now. Well, Lester would love to strike out here with one out. That man at third base, Mawa, has struck out 50 times so far this season. Line to left and Gomes will knock it down. Coming in from third is Santana. He'll score. Mauer to second throw goes there. It's late. It's going to be an RBI double and it's two to one now. The Twins are on the board. Now Joe Mauer in his career has just been such a tough out for John Lester. Cut fastball that time going to the opposite field. A nice effort out here by Gomes. He lost where the ball was for a second, and by the time he's able to regroup and pick it up, Mauer's on his way to second base. I mentioned that Mauer came into the game a 350 hitter against John Lester. He is one for three tonight with that RBI. Mauer at second base, one down, Josh Willingham. 
It's a ball outside. Walked in the first, popped out to the pitcher, John Lester, in the fourth inning. The strike evens a count at one and one. Over 100 pitchers now is Lester. Look at the breakdown for him in a 33 pitch first inning. Pretty minimal the rest of the way and had a string at one point of retiring 11 twins in a row. Breaking ball, fooled him there. One and two. Good curveball from Lester. Yeah, it took a little bit off that curveball that time and had Willingham out in front of it. Morales waiting on deck still just one out in the inning and a pop up right side of the infield Mike Napoli makes the catch for the second out of the sixth inning. Well our friends at HP Hood have teamed up with the Red Sox Foundation to help fund every little league in Massachusetts board member Mike Egan led this effort which will help all 200 little leagues in the Commonwealth. Thanks to Hood and to the Red Sox Foundation. Two down here in the sixth inning, a run in. Joe Maurer represents the tying run at second base. And Kendrys Morales coming up. Strike evens account at one and one. And Morales didn't like that call at all. He thought that ball was inside. Not many at bats from the uh, right side of the plate for Morales. Coming into the game, only nine at bats. 20 from the left side. Remember, just signed like Stephen Drew did with the Red Sox. Morales well, spending 2006 through 2012 as. Remember the Angels hit a 281 on his time with Los Angeles in 464 games. He was originally signed by the Angels as a non drafted free agent in 04. Last year, spent the year in Seattle with the Mariners. 2 1 is on the ground to short. Drew's got it. And Morales and the Twins are retired. They do get a run in the sixth inning off Lester. It's 2 1 Boston.
Two to one, Red Sox have the lead over the Minnesota Twins. Twins getting a run in the top of the sixth inning. It is two, three, and four for Boston here in the bottom of the sixth. The Bogarts, Pedroia, and Ortiz face Phil Hughes. And Bogarts take strike one. Hughes has retired nine in a row. Bogarts takes the breaking ball and grounds it foul. 0 and 2. The Cardiovascular Institute of Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center invites you to join the club. The Walking Club gives free tools and tips to get you and your family walking towards better health. For more, visit BIDMC.org slash walking. In the air to shallow right, out goes Dozier, in comes Fold, and Sam Fold makes the catch. FW Web specialists in process controls help industrial plants throughout the Northeast run at optimum efficiency. Wow, bet you didn't know that about FW Web. For more on this proud Boston Red Sox sponsor, visit FWWeb.com. One out in the sixth inning for Dustin Pedroia. Double to drive in a run in the first inning. It's 25th RBI of the year. Grounded out to shortstop in the third. Under the glove of Hughes, Dozier at second base in the air, the throw, and the tag apparently by Maurer. Wow. Throw is off the mark towards the runner, and John Farrell's going to come out and argue it. Roy looking into the dugout wanted him to challenge this, and we'll see if he actually did. Make contact with Dustin on the tag. Yeah, both Pedroia and Ani Bale, the first base coach, uh, want uh, wanted Farrell to come out. That's a heck of a play right there. Never. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see the foot. Didn't tag him, that's for sure. No, he didn't tag him. Let's see if the foot keeps in contact with the bag. There it looks like it is. And they're not going to challenge it. That's a heck of a play by Dozier at second base. Yes. <laughs> Just they have the arm strength from that position up in the air to get the ball to first base in time is very impressive. Two outs here in the sixth inning. David Ortiz takes ball one. Two and oh. It's now 11 in a row retired by Phil Hughes. Mark Baden hop up in the pen for Boston. Light three and zero, oh, and Big Poppy fouls it straight back. Time to check out the list: top players for Minnesota and Boston. Agree, disagree? Give us your opinion. Hashtag Nesson List. Three one is foul, just outside the line. It's like he doesn't want it. Yeah, yeah. Somebody else to hold it and look at it and I'm sure he'll eventually take it. <laughs> Playoff pitch. 
fouled off himself, and that hurt. He got that cut fastball down and in and topped it. There's the little cut at the end and tops it off his foot. As Big Poppy walks it off, I wonder if that kid got the ball back. <laughs> he didn't seem to have any interest no, in it. None. <laughs> Tees fouls it off over by the Red Sox dugout. Hit for Big Poppy through the shift. And Ortiz on with two outs. That breaks up a string of 11 in a row retired by Phil Hughes. Well, a painful at bat for Ortiz, but uh, defeats the shift with the line drive to the left of Brian Dozier, the second baseman. Goes into a dive for it, but it's uh, quickly by him. Ball hit very hard by Ortiz. So the Red Sox have a base runner with two outs in the inning. Two outs Ortiz at first and Mike Napoli the batter he's done the same thing twice. It's gone out to third base Eduardo Escobar up to the task both times. Quickly by Dozier and into center field. Sharply hit. And up to second goes Big Poppy. Red Sox making some noise with two down here in the sixth inning. And the four and five hitters in the lineup both scorching at uh, Ortiz with a hard line drive. And uh, Napoli very hard up the middle again by Dozier. That one to his right. I wonder how much Arnie enjoys the headbutt every time Napoli gets a base hit. I don't think I, I you know, that, you think over the course of a season, it's a lot of headbutts. Yeah, Nap's going to get some hits and, yeah. you know, he's going to have some damage by the end of the year. That's the coaches uh, over the last number of years having to wear helmets for their safety at first and third base. Two on, two down, Daniel Nava, 0 for 2. And struck out, grounded out. To left field. Willingham coming in, makes the catch in left. Sinking liner able to hold on to it as he goes down, and Hughes and the Twins get out of the jam as the Red Sox strand a pair with their 6 2 1 Boston.
Back at Fenway Park, 2 to 1. Red Sox have the lead over the Twins, and back to the mound again is Lester with 108 pitches. Oswaldo Arcia to lead it off here for the Twins. 0 for 2. And has struck out twice. He's not waiting around this time. Swings at the first pitch. And Pedroia in short right field makes the catch for the first out of the seventh inning. Well, don't miss Red Sox game day live presented by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union tomorrow afternoon at 1. TC and Steve Lyons will have Steve's candid conversation with Johnny Gomes. And they'll preview John Lackey's start against the Twins. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Lester getting the first out of the seventh inning, and that is the night for the Red Sox. Lefty departs with a 2 1 lead. Twins with one out here in the top half of the seventh inning. Lester's night is over after six and a third, giving up one run. Kurt Suzuki standing in and taking strike one. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by your local New England Ford dealers. Burke Badenhop is becoming everyday Burke. He has been in there a lot lately for the Red Sox and with great results. 33rd appearance 0 2 with a 1.64 earned run average. 21 K's to 10 walks. Opponents hitting at 257 against him. He's in the midst of a 15 and two third inning scoreless streak. Has gone 30 consecutive innings pitch without allowing an earned run. One run allowed during that stretch, which began in the second inning back on April the 18th. On the ground towards third base, Bogarts on the run and in time to get Suzuki two down. The pulling a doubleheader at the office, WB Mason's wide selection of Green Mountain Coffee K Cup packs will keep you running and guarantees to satisfy any fan base. Order by 11.30 a.m. and get free same day delivery. Who but WB Mason? Scoreless inning streak and John Farrell back out there again. So Bidenhop facing Suzuki and that's it for Burke tonight. So the pitching change with now two outs in the top of the seventh inning. 2-1 Red Sox.
Kurt Suzuki. Two outs here in the seventh inning. Third pitcher of the inning is Craig Breslow's 24th appearance, two and two, with a 4.37 earned run average. Opponents hitting at 289 against Breslow. Eduardo Escobar. Bats for the third time tonight. He did not enjoy his at bats against John Lester. Struck out looking in the second, then swinging in the fifth. Two and zero. Oh. Three oh two left-handed. Three twenty-six right-handed for Escobar. John Farrell deciding to take Burke Badenhop out after one batter. I thought maybe Badenhop would stay in at least to face. Uh... Escobar that if Escobar got on and probably bring in Breslow to face full but making the move here to the switch hitter figuring that he struck out twice against Lester but he ends up walking so tying run put on here with two outs in the seventh inning well don't miss WB extra innings tonight right after the game you can't go wrong when you buy right at WB Mason TC and Wake will break down John Lester's performance, and you'll hear from the Red Sox general manager, Ben Charrington. Two down, Escobar at first, and Sam Fold the batter. Fold fouled out in the third, grounded out to second base in the fifth. Stirring in the Red Sox pen again to Zawa. Looks like he's going to be warming up here. Is that will be a strike? One and one. First strike thrown by Breslow since coming in. And it is to Zawa. Fold fouls it off. Still in the box when it hit him again. One and two. And slider that time from Breslow and full uh, struggling to get to the outside part of the plate to make contact on that and foul it off. Fold to center field. Brock Holt moves back and under to make the catch that ends the top of the seventh inning. It's seventh inning stretch from Fenway, and it's 2 1 Red Sox.
as a midseason acquisition you can't pass up. During June only, get a Dymo LM160 label maker for just $9.99 and keep your life organized for under 10 bucks. Visit WBMason.com and order yours while supplies last. Something's missing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Maybe she's trying to make some sort of statement. She loves it. Remdog and Jerry. Salem, Virginia. Johnny Gomes will lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Gomes with a swing and a foul tip for strike one. Phil Hughes still in the game here into the seventh inning. Take a look at the pitching line brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Six plus six hits, two runs. RBIs for Bogarts and Pedroia. Foul back 0 and 2. Another nice job tonight by John Lester. Uh, squeezed a little bit in that first inning. He had to throw a lot of pitches in the first inning. And of course coming out in the seventh. But uh, very good job again. Need some help from the bullpen here to acquire his eighth win of the year. John came in at seven and seven, going six and a third tonight, giving up one run. In there for strike three, a breaking ball and the sixth strikeout for Phil Hughes. Third time that Johnny Gomes has struck out tonight. And you've got to admire what Hughes has done here in this ball game tonight too. He's pitched very, very well. Uh, no walks in the game for him. There's the breaking ball right there to get to Gomes for the third straight time in this ball game tonight. But uh, his pitch counts low. He's been all around home plate all night long. Make insurance great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. Stephen Drew doubled in the second inning, grounded out to first base in the fifth. Talking about the starters off the top tonight. Red Sox pitchers coming into the game with a 1.53 earned run average over the last five games on the current homestand. And more good pitching tonight from John Lester to keep it going. Drew didn't like that call two and two. Yeah, questioning the last fastball, and uh, you can see the umpire Megan shaking his head. Yes, it did get the bottom of the strike zone. Just barely. Ninetieth pitches on the ground to second baseman Brian Dozier, and there are two outs here in the seventh inning. We'll tune in tonight after Red Sox coverage for Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Adam and Sarah will bring you the sights and sounds from Day One of Patriots minicamp. Plus, you'll hear from former Bruin Sean Thornton about his past seven seasons in the black and gold. Two down here in the seventh inning. David Ross, 0 for 2. He struck out swinging, popped out to second base. And it's one and one. Yeah. 
Strike two. David Ross batting out of the number nine spot tonight. Shift on in the infield for Ross too. All players on the left side. Now it looks like they're going to move the second baseman back with two strikes. The center field at Sam Fold makes the catch. It ends the inning. Phil Hughes continues to impress, but the Red Sox have a 2-1 lead at the end of seven. On Twitter for tweets about exclusive contests, news, and more happening in Boston, Worcester, Cape Cod, Southern New Hampshire, and everywhere in between. Follow at Duncan Boston on Twitter today. The Red Sox run on Duncan. Now we head to the top half of the eighth inning back at Fenway. Another tight one. Red Sox have a 2 1 lead. And a new pitcher for the Red Sox, fourth of the night, as Kenichi Tazawa comes into the game. His 34th appearance of the year, one and one with a 2.40 earned run average, 31 Ks to seven walks, and opponent sitting at 246 against Tazawa. Took his first loss of the season on Sunday against the Cleveland Indians. He allowed to go ahead home run to Nick Swisher to lead off the 11th inning. Was his first home run allowed since May the 18th against Detroit, and his first loss since September of 28th of last year. At Baltimore. Second on the staff in appearances with 33. Danny Santana leading it off here in the eighth has two hits, single and a double, and has scored the Minnesota Twins only run tonight. There is strike one. Craig Breslow got the final out of the seventh inning. An inning that Lester started, got one out. Badenhop came in, got one out. And after Breslow walked Escobar, he got one out and getting Sam Fold to fly out to center field. Bunt bid, and oh. that hit him out of the box. And it looked like he did. Saying no, but it sure looked like he did. And John Farrell's going to come out and argue that. Take another. Well, it's tough to tell here. We can't see the box, but Ooh, right up in the shoulder. Yeah, up in the shoulder. Was he in? Was he out? If he was out, he should be out. Maybe this will give us a good look. Right foot. 
Right foot in, I think. So another chance here for Santana. And he ends up striking out anyway. First out of the eighth inning. Good split finger fastball from Tazawa to pick up the strikeout. Moving down and away from Santana. Santana with a two for four night. One down in the eighth inning. Brian Dozier, the batter. He's lying to right, fly to center, and had a sacrifice bunt. Zao's allowed three earned runs in his last 16 innings pitch to 1.36 earned run average during that time. Started the year with 11 scoreless appearances. Paul Molitor able to hand off a baseball over there. He's done that a few times, made the nice plays. What a great player he was. That's pretty good players on that coaching staff over there. To the right, still one and two. Yankees have a 3 1 lead over Toronto tonight in the sixth inning. Blue Jays starting the day with a four and a half game lead over the Yankees. It's Tom Bernanski. If the Yankees can hold on, the Red Sox can go hold on. It goes to seven and a half. Fouled off at the plate. We'll do it again. One and two. Help Nessa by taking a quick two minute survey and enter for a chance to win a VIP Nessa experience at the ballpark in July. Visit Nessa.com slash survey during tonight's game for your chance to win. Two pitch to Dozier in the dirt, and it's two and two. Joe Mauer waiting on deck, one out here in the eighth. Swing and a miss. Dozier strikes out. He's going to try to reach, but he'll be out as it got away from Ross briefly. Second strikeout for Tazawa. Two down here in the eighth, and it's a splitter again. Yeah, both, both strikeouts for Tazawa coming on the split finger fastball. That one bouncing. Nice play by David Ross to keep that from going between his legs. And eventually having to tag uh, or throw out Dozier, I should say, at first base. Two down for Joe Maurer. Slide to left twice. Double to drive in the Twins' only run. Did that in the sixth inning. Curveball in there for strike one.
Tap foul 0 and 2. Play day baseball here tomorrow. 135 start time at Fenway. John Lackey 8 4 matched up against Kyle Gibson 6 and 5, but a 3.55 earned run average. Lackey with a 3.24 earned run average. Finale of the series and of the homestand. 0 2 pitch to Joe Maurer. Low for ball one. Double for Maurer in the sixth inning, the first extra base hit against a lefty this season. And that was off John Lester at the time. Second like fastball inside. I should say away, excuse me. Now our fouls it away, still one and two. Coming into this year, Maurer, a career 323 hitter in the major leagues. And coming into this game tonight, hitting at just 258 so far in the season this year. Last year, he finished the year hitting at 324. Back to the split. Swing and a miss gets away from Ross. He'll have to throw to first. He will. Santana, Dozier, and Maurer all down by way of the K for Chinichi Tozawa. It's 2 1 Sox. Two to one Red Sox have the lead over the Minnesota Twins. It's the last of the eighth inning and the top of the Red Sox order Brock Holt Xander Bogarts Dustin Pedroia. Phil Hughes who brought his seven and two record into tonight's game pitching very well but offense not giving him much support just one run for Hughes. As Holt takes strike one. Two hits tonight for Holt single and a double he has scored two runs. Stolen a base. 
And a nice defensive play in his first major league game in center field. Ground ball to short has Santana throwing him out at first base. Enjoy the rich taste of farmhouse blend coffee from Cumberland Farms. It's made from 100% Arabica coffee for the perfect balance of aroma, body, and taste. Stop in today for a cup of do it yourself coffee perfection for only 99 cents, any size. Double barreled action for the Twins. Matt Carrere and Brian Dunsing up in the pen. Red Sox have Edward Mujica up in the pen. Some question before the game as John Farrell was asked about the availability of Koji Uihara after going back to back games, and apparently he is not available. This is into center field, a base hit for Bogarts, a one out single. Well, first hit of the night for Bogarts. Now gives him a four game hitting streak, but he had that sacrifice fly back in the third inning to give the Red Sox their second run of the ball game. The soft line drive jammed a little bit, but in a good spot. Nobody had to be able to make the play. One out, one on. Dustin Pedroia, one for three, had an RBI double back in the first inning. Since then, has grounded out twice. Red Sox would love to grab some breathing room here, just a one run advantage. Especially where it appears that Koji Uihara is unavailable. Yeah, John Farrell saying before the game he'd have to wait till Uihara through prior to the game to see if he was available for this one tonight, and apparently not. They would consider bringing Tozawa back out there to begin the inning. As they look at what they could be expecting in the ninth, Willingham, Morales, and Arcia. Well, not many pitches for Tozawa in the eighth oh. inning. I mean, three strikeouts. Fouled off to the right, one and two. Total of 15 pitches thrown by Tozawa in the top half of the eighth inning. Striking out Santana, Dozier, and Maurer in succession. Pedroia pops it up foul and out of play. One tonight over the average, not quite to the high yet for Phil Hughes. Pedroia to left field and deep. Back and high off the wall. Willingham will fire to second. Pedroia falls down. They got him hung up between first and second base, and the tag there for the outs. Pedroia out of the baseline, the indication. So it's not tagged out, just ran out of the baseline, avoiding the tag, and this will bring John Farrell out there. Two down as Bogarts takes third. That very close to being a home run. It does hit the top of the wall. And then Pedroia fell between first and second, but I believe he did go out of the baseline. There's another look at that shot out toward the left field, apparently just missing a home run. But the argument right now is about whether Pedroia went out of the baseline to avoid the tag, and I believe he did.
Well, this is unusual, isn't it? Getting together on, on that kind of a call? We'll take a look right here. Where's Pedroia? They're chasing him back. They did not tag him, but, I mean, look where he is. He's out of the baseline. Yeah, he's way out of the baseline. <laughs> They're going to review this. Umpires getting on the headsets. Okay, he just said possible fan interference. I think they're thinking about the play out there in the left, whether or not the fan got the hands on the ball. Is that what they're talking yeah, that's about? That's what they're talking about. I just read his lips. Possible fan interference. So that was where the fan was leaning over up there. That's what they're now reviewing. Let's see here whether or not. I didn't think he did. I don't think so no. either. Kind of whiffed on it. I think, and if it is fan interference, they would leave Met at second and third, probably. Because that would be an adjustment call by the umpire, and they would probably put Pedroia at second and Bogarts to third. But uh, from our angles, it looks like the fan whipped on it. Got two hands out. Any contact? I don't think so. No. So he is out at second base. That is not a home run. I think the umpires got that one totally right on both accounts. So two down Bogarts at third base as a result. Boy, it went down as you get around first base and that's what led to the play at second base. Yeah right there puts the brakes on and just goes down and you know I, I think had he continued back yeah. to first base he might have made it. But he decided that uh, that he was going to try to get uh, to second base, and, and I don't think there's any question that he did go out of the baseline right there. Rick Anderson, the pitching coach, went out there to talk to Hughes. Runner at third, two down here in the eighth. David Ortiz coming up. Red Sox looking to obtain some insurance here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, what do they do with Ortiz in this situation? First base open. I would imagine put him on. We'll see. Doesn't look like they're going to. I'm going to try to pitch to him here. David has grounded out to second twice and single to right. Oh, big swing and a miss for David Ortiz and a fastball right down the middle. Yeah, he's had a couple tonight where he's had fastballs right down the middle of the play with that front shoulder, that right shoulder has, fl has been flying open just a little bit too soon. Fouls it back and it's 0 and 2. Game summary brought to you by Xfinity. Phil Hughes still here in the eighth inning with two outs. John Lester went six and a third, charged with one run in his outing. Kind of pick up his eighth win of the year. Brock Holt with a couple of hits in tonight's game. RBIs for Bogarts and Pedroia. Bogarts at third, two down, an 0-2 pitch. Cut fastball away. And Ortiz lifts it in the air down the left field line. Willingham headed over. And Willingham will make the catch in fair ground that ends the eighth. We head for the ninth. It's a one run game. It's two to one, Boston.
Sox baseball and Nesson is brought to you by the new Scion TC, AT&T Mobility, Sullivan Tire and Auto Repair, GMC, visit your local GMC dealer or visit gmc.com, and by Southwest Airlines. Outside Quincy Market, Daniel Hall, it is 2-1 to one Red Sox. It's like people in a rush to get somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very quickly. Walk. Moving quick. <laughs> now some defensive changes for the Red Sox. Holt from center to right. And Jackie Bradley Jr. into the game in center field. The pitcher for the Red Sox as leading it off Josh Willingham here in the ninth. Takes ball one from Edward Mujica who gets the call here with Koji Uihara unavailable after a couple of outings in succession. Mahika's 26th appearance, 2 and 2, with a 6.29 earned run average. Opponent sitting at 302 against Mohika. This one fouled off to the right, 1 and 1. Mohika with the fastball, a split finger fastball, and a breaking ball. Last worked on the 11th of June at Baltimore. Eight of his last nine appearances have been scoreless. Thirty seven saves a year ago for the Cardinals, but certainly the Red Sox have not been using him in that capacity this year. Swing and a miss, two and two. 92 on that last fastball and keeping everything away from Josh Willingham. Mika does have one save for the Red Sox this season. Swing and a foul, tip for strike three. Out number one of the ninth inning for Mujica. And the Red Sox pitchers now have four straight strikeouts. Tazawa struck out the side in the eighth. Mujica goes upstairs with the fastball, climbing the ladder against Willingham. The pick up the strikeout. One down in the ninth inning for Kendrys Morales. Morales has popped out a second, struck out, grounded out. Strike one. There's a splitter from Mahika. Framed by Ross, but it does miss away. One and one. He could the fifth Boston pitcher of the night. Lester went six and a third, giving up the one run. Twins have Baden Hop a third, Breslow a third. Tazawa and Ng. A grounder foul makes it one and two. Tomorrow afternoon at 12:30, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Men's Warehouse. Proudly introducing Joseph Abood. TC and Steve Lyons will preview the final game of this three game series against the Twins. And the Globes' Nick Cafardo stops by with an MLB notebook. That's tomorrow at 12 30 on Nesson. 1 2. 2 and 2. Twins have action in the pen. Casey Fien is up. It off two and two. As Waldo Arcia waiting on deck, one down in the ninth.
Morales strikes out. Mejica has two outs in the ninth inning. Yeah, both strikeouts to Mejica coming on the fastball, too. He shook off the split fingered fastball from David Ross. He wanted to go back to the fastball away, got it out there, and no contact. Two down in the ninth inning, five straight strikeouts for Red Sox pitching. As Waldo Arcia, 0 for 3 in the game tonight. He has struck out twice already and popped up. Red Sox has a staff with 11 strikeouts on the night. Swing and a miss for strike one. Splitter again. First two pitches. Garcia has seen here. Two down in the ninth. Garcia pops it up. Left side. Shallow left now. Bogart's going out. Gomes coming in. Red Sox win. And it's Edward Mujica who has a 1 2 3 ninth inning picks up his second save of the year as John Lester will get his eighth win of the season and the bullpen helps out another close one here tonight from Fenway they win one nothing last night and 2 1 tonight. Now Bob's discount furniture is going to bat for the Jimmy Fund once again. Bob will donate $1,000 to the Jimmy Fund for every game saved this season. Everybody saves at Bob's. Bob's discount furniture, quality, choice, and value. Learn more at mybobs.com. Well, the Red Sox win it 2-1 to one as we send it to Tom Karen.